So welcome, everyone. Nice to be back with you and nice to be back with Corinne, who just finished my Living and Learning with Animals class. And um, so we're both very excited about having this big thing that now we, we share together. I don't talk too much about the use of clickers in the class. So I'm always very happy to have the opportunity to just take this subject out as a module and discuss it with you. So here we go. Please do feel free to ask questions as we go, and I'll keep my eye over there. I've got chat to my left and see if we can't uh, get that great sense of being together. So one of the things I think we should start out by doing is defining learning from the behavior level of analysis. So of course, all the different science siblings have their own definition of learning. They're related, but they're small differences that reflect their main interests. The neuroscientists have their definition. Ethologists have their definition. In behavior analysis, ours is very elegant in its simplicity. Learning is defined as behavior change due to certain types of experience. And we're talking about relatively lasting change. So not just an immediate change in response, but a pattern of change around that response. And it's interesting to note that learning or behavior change doesn't cover all the different kinds of change. Learning is one way we change behavior, but drugs change our behavior. Maturation changes our behavior. So we're talking about this specific kind of change, the change that's due to experience in certain conditions. So when we use the word contingent, we're talking about behavior that is only occurring or existing if certain circumstances are the case. So another word for contingent, because it is a, it's a strange word, people, myself included, often have trouble understanding what does it mean. Another word for contingent is it's dependent on. So we're talking about behavior change that's dependent on what the environment or the context, the conditions are doing. And we say that the appearance of the consequence is contingent on the behavior occurring. So that's really what we're talking about when we talk about learning. Behavior change due to certain types of experience given certain conditions. And um, I'm always revising my slides, so you'll see me writing. That's what I'm doing, new ideas. So it's, it appears that every life form on the planet, even potentially including plants, which I'll show you, learn if that's our definition, behavior change due to experience. And so here's an example of a study where mosquitoes demonstrated their great learning ability. What they did in this study was they created this chamber that could produce a vibration similar to a hand swatting the mosquito. And they preceded the vibration, the simulated swat, with an odor. And they found that the mosquitoes learned to move away as soon as they perceive the odor. So that's an example of mosquitoes learning. They learn that the odor, given that it preceded the shake, predicts the shake is going to come. And so they fly away. So the good news for us humans is keep swatting because then they'll maybe go to the person who isn't swatting them. And then this is one of my very favorite examples. This is a cuttlefish and it's in the embryo sac. It's in the egg sac. And you can see its little head and its two beady eyes looking out of the egg sac. And what they found in this study was that those embryos that could see crabs moving along in the environment were more likely to predate those crabs once they hatched out than a control group of cuttlefish who did not see any of the, of the crabs in their 
egg sac environment. So again, it's unexpected behavior change due to experience contacting the environment. And then this amazing work done um, by Gagliano in Australia and others around the world demonstrated that garden peas learn when we use our definition, behavior change due to experience. This was a Pavlovian or classical kind of study where they paired a fan flow with light. And we know that plants move to the light called phototaxis. And by pairing the flow of air from the fan, which then predicted where the light would be, when they then, after repeated pairings, just delivered the fan flow, the peas moved in the direction of the fan. So it's a learning planet. That is clearly the conclusion that we can come to. And then I'd just like to take a minute to talk, talk about the word teaching because that also applies to this use of clickers. And these are the background commonalities I want us to bring into the discussion of clickers is that animals are learning according to the principles of behavior change with and without human teachers. And the, the sort of meta understanding is that consequences are selecting or deselecting for behavior. So we need to move away from the idea that we're ever behaving for no reason. We're always behaving for an outcome. That connection between behavior and consequences can't be separated. But the consequences that select or deselect for behavior happened in the wild environment. It could be a tree branch that a bird's wing hit as it was learning to fly. So it learns to use its wings differently, or it could be weather events. It could even be the internal environment like illness or some kind of dysfunction. So I think it's important to understand that although our view is usually about the agent, it's called the behavior analysis, the human, who, are, who is delivering those antecedent cues and consequences, that in fact, we're learning from the environment all the time. 